This video is sponsored by Altium. Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to implement the encoder and the decoder block of the UNET architecture in the TensorFlow framework. So here we are in our Jupyter notebook. We can say UNET is a fully convolutional network that does image segmentation. Its goal is to predict each pixel's class. It is built upon FCN and modified in a way that it yields to better segmentation in medical imaging. So here we have the block diagram. On the left part of the diagram is the encoder network. It consists of four encoder blocks. To the right side of the diagram is the decoder network. It also contains four decoder blocks. In between, we have four skip connections connecting the encoder and the decoder blocks. Let's look at the encoder and decoder blocks in more detail. So here we have two diagrams. On the left, we have a detailed diagram of the encoder block, and on the right, we have a detailed diagram of the decoder block. Here we have the associated shape of the layers at the side of the diagram. This is the input, and its shape is 256 by 256. This input goes into the conf2d layer. Conf2d layer is the main layer here because it contains the weight. The weight learns and updates accordingly, and it also helps to extract the essential information from the input. Conf2d layer is followed by a batch normalization, and the batch normalization is followed by a re-lu layer. Re-lu is a nonlinear activation function. Introducing a nonlinear activation function in your network would help it to grasp the complex patterns from the input image. That will also help to boost the performance of the network as it would be able to learn from more complex things. After re-lu, we again have the conf2d layer, batch norm layer, and a re-lu layer. If you have noticed until now, the height and width or the shape of the layers are the same. Next, we have a max pooling. Here we can see that the height and width are reduced by a factor of 2. Max pooling helps you to reduce the spatial dimension of the incoming feature map and this acts as the output for the encoder block. Now we also have skip connections in the encoder block. So the output of the second re-lu activation function acts as a skip connection which is then fed into the decoder block for the concatenation process. Now when you look at the encoder diagram you can see these six layers are repeating. First of all, before implementing the encoder and the decoder, we are going to implement a function called convblock, which will contain all these six layers. We don't have to call these six layers every time, we just call them as a simple function. This video is sponsored by Altium, the industry standard and most professional PCB design software on the market. I've used Altium for designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom Arduinos and high-speed on-edge computer vision projects. When I tested other PCB CAD software out there, I found that nothing came close to the flexibility, ease of use, and power of Altium Designer. I mean, if you ever worked on PCB design for computer vision applications, you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task, with many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise and crosstalk. Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. Let's begin with the implementation by building the conf block. So first of all, let's define it and provide some inputs. The inputs parameters will contain the incoming feature map. The number of filters will define the number of output feature channels. It is then followed by a convolutional layer. So the convolutional layer first takes the number of filters, then a kernel size of 3, and finally the padding. The padding is an important parameter and I'll show you how it affects the output. Then here we provide the input. Let's add another line here and print the shape of x and execute it. Now we're going to have an input, say x, with a specific shape, which is a tensor. Now we're going to call the conv block with this input and we will execute it. Okay, so here you can see that it required the number of filters. So let's set the number of filters as 32. Now you can see we have a shape that is 256 by 256 by 32. Let's see. 
When we set padding as the same, then the height and width of this input feature map and output feature map are the same because it adds zero padding to it. But here if I set this parameter as valid and execute it, we will see that now the height and width of the input and output feature map are not the same. With the process of concatenation, we say padding equals to same so that the output feature map will also have the same shape, as height and width as the input. Let's execute this again to equalize the height and width. Ok, now we should code the next layers which are the batch normalization and the activation function. So these are the three layers that we need to repeat again. We will copy them here and we will change the input to x and now we're going to write return x. This is the implementation of the conv block. So let's state y here and we will print the shape of y here just to check. When you're trying to implement those layers, remember to always check the shape and try to print it. You can see here that we have the correct shape. Next we will implement the encoder block. Here for the encoder block, we must first define a function called encoder block. We set the input again. It will contain the incoming feature map and the num filters will have the number of output feature channels. If you remember, the encoder block first will be followed by a conv block. Here in this diagram, we had the same six layers. So now we don't need to write this part of code again. We just need to call this function. Set x as the output of conv block, and we're going to give it an input that is inputs and the num filters. So now this is a conv block, and it should be followed by a max pooling layer. Its value will be 2 by 2, and its input would be the output of the conv block, that is x. Here, the output of conv block would act as a skip connection and also the input for the max pool layer. And p, the output of max pool layer, would act as the output for the encoder block. So we write return x, comma p. Ok, this is the implementation of the encoder block. So now let's insert one cell here and we're going to copy these lines here. Instead of conv block, we're going to call this encoder block. The encoder will return two things. First, the skip connection and the second one is the output. So we say s.shape and p.shape. Let's print them. Ok, so as you can see, the s, that is the skip connection, or the output of the re-lu layer, has the same shape as the input, but p, the output of the pooling layer, has half of the input shape. This s acts as a skip connection, and p will be our input to the next encoder layer. Now we will implement the decoder part. So first off, let's take a look at the layers one more time. We have the input, let's say its shape is 128 by 128. It would pass through a transpose convolution. What a transpose convolution does is it learns how to upsample the image. So it takes an input image of 128 by 128 and gives us a feature map of 256 by 256. Here we increase for upsample spatial dimension by a factor of 2. The transpose convolution is then followed by concatenation with a skip connection. For concatenation, you have to have the same height and width for both of the features. Next, it is followed by the conv block, those six repeating layers. Now let's try to implement these for the decoder part. We start by calling the decoder block, which will take three arguments. First is the input, that is the incoming feature map. Second is the feature map through skip connection, and third is the number of filters. Then first, it is followed by a transpose convolution, where we increase the height and width of the incoming feature map by a factor of 2. So this conv2d transpose layer first takes number of filters, then a kernel size, that is 2 by 2, and a stride of 2. So if you set the stride as 2, you would increase the height and width by a factor of 2. And again, padding is the same. So padding same means that the height and width of the output feature map will be the same as the input. Now again, let's copy this part from here and we're going to add one more cell after this. Here we have our input, and instead of encoder we are going to say decoder block and delete these parts. Here we also need our skip connection. So if the height of your input is 256 by 256, skip connection should be 512 by 512. Let's set it as S and run this. So we need to say print x shape. We just want to check the shape, that is why we'll execute this. 
Now I can see the shape of the output of transpose convolution is 512 by 512, which is exactly the same as a skip connection. For concatenation, we need two feature maps with the same height and width. Now let's concatenate both of these feature maps, that is X and a skip connection. OK, now it's done. Once again, we print the shape. You can see things have changed here. The number of filters changed because the input number of filters is 32 for X, and for skip we have 3. So 32 plus 3 would be 35. OK, the concatenation is followed by the conv block layers. Now we write return x and y equals to output of decoder block. We say print y.shape and execute this block. Now we finish the implementation of the decoder block. In the next lecture, we will use these encoder and decoder blocks to build our entire UNet architecture.